From being on the brink of bankruptcy to becoming one of the greatest companies in the tech world, today, AMD holds one of the greatest spots in the tech industry, supplying game consoles with discrete graphic cards and providing gamers with some of the best CPUs and GPUs that are out there. We'll take a deeper dive into the history of AMD Radeon graphics, starting way back in the day when AMD didn't actually make GPUs, they were actually a CPU vendor. Instead, those first GPUs that you're about to see were produced by another company called ATI. In a nutshell, ATI was a Canadian company which was founded in 1985. It specialized in graphics industry, with the first GPU on the list being the ATI Radeon 7200. It launched in April of 2000 and was built using the 180 nanometer processing node, which was based on the RAGE 6 architecture. It packed more than 30 million transistors and came equipped with 32 megabytes of double date rate video memory, reaching clock speeds up to 166 megahertz. This is the first demo to be showcased by ATI, and it's called the Radeon's Arc. Next up, we have the ATI Radeon 8500, which launched in August of 2001. It was built using the 150 nanometer processing node, which was based on the RAGE 7 architecture. It packed double the number of transistors compared to its predecessor, coming in at a whopping 60 million. The video memory was also upgraded to 64 megabytes DDR, and the card reached clock speeds of up to 275 megahertz. The starting price was $299, which made this card a very good choice compared to NVIDIA's equivalent GeForce 3, which retailed for $499. The ATI Radeon 9700 Pro launched a year later. It was built on the same 150 nanometer manufacturing process that was based on the RAGE 8 architecture. The main specifications on this card are 110 million transistors, 128 megabytes of DDR video memory, with clock speeds reaching 325 megahertz. It retailed for $399 MSRP and was crowned as the new king of GPUs, being the first card to support DirectX 9. It was very well received from all the respective users and reviewers all around the globe. In March of 2004, ATI launched the Radeon X800 XT. It was built using TSMC's smaller 130 nanometer process, which was based on a brand new R400 architecture. Packed with 160 million transistors, the card came equipped with 256 megabytes of GDDR3 memory and a reach clock speeds of up to 500 megahertz. The starting price was $499 MSRP. The demo showcased here features Ruby, which we've seen before, although now she has way more polygons. Leaving so soon. But first, let me ask you, how many times do you find yourself typing the same password for every account that you open? Not only is this behavior risking all of your account security, but you're also becoming an easy target to all the hackers getting their hands on your accounts. It's not just about leaking your personal information, credit card details, or delivery address. There are more serious crimes that have happened, such as identity theft, crimes committed under your name, and even loans under your name. Having a secure password manager that is quick and easy to use is a necessity. That's why I recommend using NordPass, today's sponsor. NordPass is not just simply a password manager. It's the essential cybersecurity tool that makes everyone's life easier and safer. What I love most about using NordPass is how easy and intuitive it is to use on a daily basis. It autofills all your information when logging in, or even credit card details when buying online, while at the same time having the highest level of security possible. You can get my exclusive offer of NordPass for a two-year plan plus one additional month free here by clicking my special link in the description below or use the coupon code NICTECH at the checkout, 
it's risk-free, and there's a 30-day money-back guarantee. Back to the video. The ATI Radeon X1800 XT launched in October of 2005. This GPU was built using the TSMC's 90 nanometer process, which was based on the R500 architecture. It provided better efficiency and better performance than ever before. With a whopping 321 million transistors, the card came equipped with 512 megabytes of GDDR3 video memory, clocked at 600 megahertz. The starting price for this GPU was $549 MSRP. These demos showcased here highlight complex rain and water effects, physical simulation on the GPU, detailed brickwork, and a realistic dynamic lighting environment. It is ready. Optica. Now we will finish this. Ruby, you always surprise me. <coughs> Ruby. On October 2006, AMD announced the completion of its $5.4 billion acquisition of ATI. From now on, we enter the AMD making GPU era, although ATI still continued to release GPU on their name for a couple more years. The Radeon 2900 XT was launched in May of 2007. ATI introduced an almost entirely new architecture called TerraScale, produced with an even smaller 80 nanometer process. It brought new features to the table, like using a unified shader architecture, support for DX10, and using a dedicated hardware engine for tessellation. The card came equipped with 512 megabytes of GDDR3 video memory, and later on, ATI started selling one gigabyte variant with GDDR4 memory. It had a whopping 720 million transistors and reached 743 megahertz clock speeds. The 2900 XT retailed for $399 MSRP. In November of that same year, the Radeon HD 3870 was launched. It was based on the same TerraScale architecture, but it's built on a significantly smaller 55 nanometer manufacturing process. The card came equipped with 512 megabytes of GDDR4 video memory and reached clock speeds of up to 777 megahertz. The main selling point was the slight bump in clock speeds and the lower $269 price tag. This demo showcases real-time physics simulation, which looked quite impressive back then. The ATI Radeon HD4870 launched in June of 2008. It was set to compete in the high-end market. Built using the same TerraScale architecture and the same 55 nanometer process, it bumped the number of transistor to 956 million and had a similar frequency as its predecessor. The video memory was also upgraded to GDDR5, and because of the sharp increase in bandwidth, the Radeon HD4870 was a very good step forward. Even though it still couldn't compete with the GTX 280, the main competitor at its time, AMD gave this GPU a starting price of only $299 MSRP, which was very attractive to most of the PC gamers. In September of 2009, ATI launched the last Radeon on their name. The 5870 was their last shot at getting crowned as the GPU king and they totally nailed it. The performance uplift on this card was astonishing. As TechRadar put it, it's not just the fastest graphics card ever, fully capable of grinding NVIDIA's mighty GeForce GTX 285 into a powdery pulp. It's quite simply the most powerful computer chip we've seen of any kind. The 5870 was built on a newer TerraScale 2 architecture using the 40 nanometer process. It came equipped with one gigabyte of GDDR5 video memory and reached clock speeds of up to 850 megahertz. It retailed for $399 MSRP. On August of 2010, AMD announced that they would retire the ATI brand for its graphic chipset in favor of the AMD name. So a couple of months later in December of that same year, 
AMD launched the Radeon 6970, which was built using the 40 nanometer process. It was based on Terascale 3 architecture, boasting 2 gigabytes of GDDR5 video memory and clock speeds reaching 880 megahertz. This card launched for $369 MSRP, and while Nvidia was struggling with their overheating Fermi graphics cards, AMD was having a field day with its very positive reviews. In December of 2011, AMD launched the Radeon 7970, which was built using the new 28 nanometer process and on a new architecture called GCN 1.0, with a new GPU codenamed Tahiti. It packed more than 4 billion transistors and came equipped with 3 gigabytes of GDDR5 video memory, reaching clock speeds of up to 925 megahertz. The launch price for this card was an astonishing $549 MSRP. <laughs> OMG, Louie, you are killing me here. That's it! I cannot work with these amateurs any longer. I am a serious actor. So Is it the AMD Radeon R9 290 launched in October of 2013, just after Nvidia managed to sort out their heating issues with their Fermi graphics cards. AMT said, you know what, we should be the king of overheating GPUs too. And that's where the R9 290 comes in, putting only one cooler in the reference card because, I guess, it looked cooler? Pun intended. It reached temperatures as high as 93 degrees Celsius. The specs include the same 28 nanometer process, but based on a newer GCN 2.0 architecture. The transistor count went up to 6.2 billion and it reached clock speeds of up to 947 megahertz. The memory was upgraded to 4 gigabytes GDDR5. Despite the overheating issues, this card offered a very good price to performance ratio because it retailed for $399 MSRP. It simply means more fun for me. The AMD Radeon R9 Fury X launched in June of 2015. For a $649 price tag, this card was considered unreasonable due to the fact that it came equipped with only 4 gigabytes of video memory, which at that time, 6 gigabytes was the norm for high-end GPUs. It was built using the TSMC's 28 nanometer process and packed 8.9 billion transistors, reaching clock speeds of up to 1050 megahertz. The main selling point was the extreme bandwidth speeds, the new type of memory that this card used called HBM, which stood for high bandwidth memory, allowed for it to have 4096-bit memory bus. To put that into perspective, the fastest NVIDIA GPU today. The 3090Ti has a 384-bit memory bus lane. Nonetheless, it didn't make up for the low amount of VRAM, and the overclocking limitations only made it worse. It wasn't helping that AMD stock either, which hit an all-time low a couple of months later, causing the company to almost go bankrupt. With the stakes higher than ever, the future of this company rested only upon one person's shoulders. That person being Lisa Su. Since the high-end GPU market was too difficult to compete in, AMD changed their strategy completely. They decided to compete in the entry-level market. So in June of 2016, AMD released the RX 480, an entry-level GPU priced at $229, which would be considered a massive success because this GPU still continues to sell to this day. The RX 480 was produced on TSMC's 14 nanometer FinFET process, which was based on the GCN 4.0 architecture. With two variants available at launch, four or eight gigabytes of GDDR5 memory, it reached clock speeds of up to 1,266 megahertz and was considered as the value king of graphic cards. In August of 2017, AMD released the Vega 64, now competing at the high-end market once again. 
For its value proposition, it provided a good gaming experience and handled productivity tasks better than some of the NVIDIA's high-end GPUs. It was based on GCN 5.0 architecture and was produced using the 14 nanometer process. It came equipped with 8 gigabytes of super-fast HBM2 memory and reached clock speeds of up to 1,546 megahertz. The launch price for this card was $499 MSRP. The Radeon 5700 XT launched in July of 2017. It was based on the new RDNA 1.0 architecture, with a smaller and even more efficient 7 nanometer processing node, which was a very good upgrade compared to its predecessor, resulting in an increase of 50% performance uplift per watt. The 5700 XT came equipped with even faster 8 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory and reached clock speeds of up to 1,905 megahertz. It had a launch price of $399 MSRP, offering a better value proposition compared to NVIDIA's cards. But it wasn't until the year 2020 when AMD actually started trading blows with NVIDIA. The RX 6900 XT launched in October, and it was a serious performance beast. It was built using the same 7 nanometer manufacturing process, now on a newer RDNA 2.0 architecture. The number of transistors on this thing was 26.8 billion. It also came equipped with 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory, and it reached clock speeds of up to 2,250 megahertz. The Radeon 6000 series is also the first lineup to introduce ray tracing, and although the performance numbers were not good, it was a step in the right direction. AMD introduced some new features too, like Fidelity FX, Super Resolution, Smart Access Memory, and Infinity Cache. Later on, they would release a refreshed version of this card in 2022 called the RX 6950 XT that had a slight bump in memory bandwidth. In the last quarter of 2022, AMD is expected to launch the RX 7000 series. Although we don't have a sheet of specs for this card, Based on some rumors, we do have a clear indication on how much performance increase we can expect from the RX 7900 XT. It will be built on RDNA 3.0 architecture, which is set to give a 2 times performance per watt increase compared to RDNA 2.0. The manufacturing process will be the 5 nanometer node produced by TSMC, and it will be probably the first card in the world to reach record-breaking clock speeds at 3000 MHz without overclocking. The memory size will be bumped to 24 GB GDDR6. It will also feature 384 MB of Infinity Cache thanks to 3D vCache on some models, and it will be marketed as a true 8K gaming GPU. In terms of price, AMD always stays competitive. I think that this cost will remain the same as last year, starting at $999 MSRP. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, there's another video on the evolution of NVIDIA GeForce graphics if you want to see it. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Let me know in the comments down below on what you think about AMD and what you want to see next. Make sure to check out NordPass if you're interested. This video would not be possible without them. All details are listed in the description. You can also join my Discord server too, where we talk about GPU news and tech-related memes. I'll see you again very soon.